Located deep in the mountains of the Caucasus is a preserved gem of the ancient world. A people founded centuries ago whose lifestyle has continued to revolve around care for nature and others. The people residing in the borders of the unrecognized country of Abkhazia, known as the Abkhazians, speak various languages, practice various religions, and come from a variety of modern and ancient backgrounds. This short video aims to spearhead a project on the coverage of some of the former Soviet Union's ethnic groups to really emphasize the true scale of the Union, all posted in alphabetical order. The Abkhaz of Abkhazia largely live in the districts of Gargara and Gao in their country of 240,000 people, which is around 84% mountainous. I use the term country lightly. All but Russia and a select few authoritarian countries recognize the independence of the country from its host, Georgia. Whether or not you believe one way or another, for the sake of me describing it, I will refer to the Abkhaz people as people of Abkhazia, and of course I do not hold any political associations with it. The largely Christian country has bounced between Islam and Orthodox Christianity, with the original pagan religion making a sharp comeback in recent years, alongside 16% of the population that still practices Islam. The once beautiful nation on the Black Sea coast has only been somewhat repaired after the many wars the region has seen both in recent decades and throughout its history, which had all but destroyed its beautiful architecture. Moving forward, the history of the Abkhaz people is ancient, and often scattered through a long timeline of oppression and subjugation. The Abkhaz people largely now on the borders of the former USSR, originated as a kingdom under a somewhat proto-Georgian kingdom known as the Kulshais which was a somewhat defined area in the Iron and Classical Antiquity Ages next to the more infamous kingdom known as Iberia, not to be confused with the Iberia of the modern era. As Greek control of the Black Sea increased dramatically in the 6th century, cities like Sahumi, the now capital of Abkhazia, rose up through trade, amongst many other Greek trading cities, including Odessa. The Greek-founded capital was named after the Hornbeam Tree by a dominant ethnic group within the Kolshai. As time went on, Abkhazia would continually have a diverse cultural makeup and this diversity would expand throughout its entire history. The modern borders harbored people from all over the region, beyond just Greeks, and this would continue as the region developed into the Roman Kingdom of Lazica, which would carry over into the Byzantine Age. It would be here where the pagan Abkhazians would convert to Christianity. Since the area was beautiful, but harsh, nobody really messed with the Abkhazians and this temporarily saved them from being crushed by the empires around them. As it would later be renowned for, the ports on the beautiful shores harbored pirates and vagabonds, escaping the reaches of the Byzantinian and Turkish cultures. From here on out, Abkhazia would fly between cultures, but notably did attempt to join the Sassanid Persians in the 6th century. This involvement would fail, but bring an enormous war to the Caucasus, with Lazika in the middle of it all. Shortly after the failure to join the Sassanids, the larger area of Georgia would swoop in and control Abkhazia. At this time, Georgia and Abkhazia weren't so different, and for most of the history, Abkhazia and Georgia had very close relations. I mention this because we often think of Abkhazia nowadays as the enemy of Georgia, but that was not always the case. Fast forward a few centuries of confusing battles and constant war in the region, and the Ottomans ultimately make their appearance in the 16th century. This is when things got really interesting for Abkhazia. The Abkhazians at this time got their own principality and converted to Islam, with a unique sense of autonomy in the enormous Ottoman Empire. Also, as a cool side note here, Abkhazia had a small Ethiopian population of Afro-Abkhaz people that popped up at this time. It is unknown where they came from, but it is believed that somehow they were enslaved by the Ottomans and sent as a sort of penal effort to the rough, pirate-filled region of Abkhazia. However, this connection with the Ottomans and Abkhazia would all change in the early 1800s, where the region on the Black Sea would once again be in war. Squashed between the fighting giants of Russia and the Ottomans, the Abkhazians sided with the closer of the two, the Russians. To combat the Islamic Abkhazians, many Islamic Abkhaz people were deported into the Ottoman Empire by the Russians. It is projected that somewhere between 39,000 to 600,000 Abkhaz people are in modern Turkey because of this forced removal. These people within Turkey now are known as Muha Jurun, leaving, according to the 2018 census, 
244,000 Abkhaz people in the modern day borders. As almost half of the population, most of whom were practicing Islam, were deported under Russian occupation, the centuries old Abkhaz elite started to infight. This would hinder the region as they were unpredictable between the allegiance to the Ottomans and Russians, somewhat siding with the Turks during the Crimean War while otherwise supporting Russia. This conflict left those who weren't deported to flee around the region and world. The resulting power vacuum will leave us with a more recent history of Abkhazia, where enormous elites would have infighting over the large population of now Russians, Georgians, Ottoman Greeks, and Armenians who were all flooding into the dozens of empty villages in the prime real estate of the mountains and shoreline, or otherwise known as the Abkhaz people's ethnic homeland. The resulting barrage left the ethnically Abkhaz people to become victims of attacks by their own government and they were forced into a lower class by the intruding elite. However, a small number of ethnic Abkhazians stayed through all the hardships and would later blossom again into the ethnic group once again. Upholding the Caucasus proverb, it is better to be a poor man in your homeland than a king in Cairo. With an again diverse Abkhazia, the Abkhaz culture largely reconverted to Christian denominations or were just overcome by the large influx of Orthodox churches popping up. However, by the year 1917, the Russian Empire was threatened by the Soviets in a brutal civil war. Some Abkhazians popped up as communists within the country. Abkhazia had internal struggles, but largely stuck to itself during the civil war, with Georgia brokering an independence guarantee for Abkhazia, which was quite surprising considering some areas were now largely Georgian. This weird relationship between Georgia and Abkhazia would culminate in Abkhazia joining a newly formed democratic Georgian country. But as peace talks were being brokered, pockets of communist revolutionaries formed in the capital of Abkhazia and north of the border in Sochi. However, the Georgians would retake Abkhazia and instituted a stronger grip on the people of Abkhazia, but ultimately blood was shed and the Abkhaz autonomy largely stripped. Until 1921, the Abkhaz people had immense political troubles with Georgia and the ethnic Abkhaz people often sided with the Bolsheviks. Notable Abkhazians, some even coming from diasporas abroad, joined the Abkhaz people to achieve unity with the Bolsheviks, and shortly thereafter, the Red Army took control of Georgia and Abkhazia. With this flare-up over, from 1921 to 1931, the Abkhaz people enjoyed autonomy in the USSR under the Abkhaz Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic. This somewhat rebuilt the scattered identity of the Abkhaz people. This time period improved Georgian and Abkhaz relations, and the small republic became its own socialist republic alongside giant countries like Georgia within the USSR. Despite this, the small republic found itself in real trouble economically, and Abkhaz leadership would ultimately join the Georgian Soviet Socialist Republic as two equal republics. However, it became clear that the Abkhaz perspective that they were being forced once again as subordinates of the Georgian government did not sit well. This time, they were un under the entire umbrella of the Soviet Union. By 1931, the Abkhaz people were now once again under Georgian rule much to their dismay. Stalin himself was an ethnic Georgian, and as the 20th century moved forward, Abkhazia's place in the Soviet Union reflected a forced subjugation of their people under the Soviet government and Georgian SSR. Obviously, Georgians may disagree with me here, but as I cover ethnic groups in this series, there will be a lot of perspectives and bias involved. That is just the reality of covering these groups. And so I apologize for any perceived bias, and it is impossible to avoid especially with such little sources on a small country like Abkhazia. And so it was in this time period, during peak Stalinism, where Abkhazian culture was hit hard once again by the surrounding cultures. The language of Abkhazian was replaced with Georgian and Russian. Just as Stalin died in 1953, only around 34 of the 228 Abkhaz government positions were of Abkhaz ethnicity. However, when the thaw came around after Stalin's death, the Abkhaz people high in the mountains as they were, started to redefine their ethnicity once again, and the language was even recognized by the Soviet government, which was relatively rare. If it isn't clear yet, the people of Abkhazia have been stripped of their culture numerous times through history. This was a major theme within the USSR, and even present in other countries like Georgia. But on the opposite end of things, as much as Stalin oppressed the Abkhazians, they knew the Soviet government had their back from any sort of control by Georgia in the dual republic as the USSR was a security buffer. 
While the USSR had dozens of languages being suppressed, under Georgian rule, the Abkhazians really would be the target minority. So as the Iron Curtain started to fall, Abkhazians wanted to regain their SSR status within the USSR. But just as this reached Moscow, Abkhazia was ripped away with Georgia as they exited the Soviet Union in 1991. As a result of this chaotic post-Soviet period, Georgia elected some nationalist leaders that threatened Abkhazians' autonomy. But Abkhazia was just as bad in this period, and conducted mass killings against Georgians to solidify their ethnic control over the country. Things got very, very dark really fast, and at one point, Abkhazians kidnapped a Georgian official, and in 1992, all hell broke loose as people from all over the Caucasus got involved as Georgia and Abkhazia went to war. This resulted in more mass killings by both sides, and this would continue even after the war ended. This mutual hatred would grow rapidly, and in 2008, when a second war would pop up again in Georgia, Abkhazia was taken by Russia from Georgia. Although Abkhazians largely supported this move, Russia took large areas of the weaker government in Georgia for little reason. The region since 2008 has been troublesome, but has gotten better in recent years, as it is still pretty much controlled by Russia. Russia remains its largest tourist and trading partner, and over a million Russian tourists visit the country each year. The once powerful and populous Georgians inside Abkhazia now are a small minority as a result of the ethnic cleansing, thus leaving only around 40,000 Armenians. Despite this, Christianity is still the dominant religion, with around 16% practicing Islam. Hostilities between Georgia and Abkhazia are still somewhat hot, but as Georgia becomes a dominant player in the Caucasus region once again, the loss of Abkhazia is on the mind, but not as important as it was in the 90s. Altogether, it is hard to talk about Abkhazians without talking about the numerous other groups in the region, but as this video progresses, I try to talk more about the history than the people. I'm not yet sure whether I rather focus on the ethnicity or the nation, but this will be less of a problem when I touch on areas within the modern borders of Russia. And so that concludes the mess of Abkhazia, as timely as I can. Abkhazia is really a beautiful place, with immense cultural and historic ties, and it really is a shame to see the situation as it's been for the last three decades now. Hopefully soon they can find their peace. If any unfriendly characters show up in my comments section, please do not go too crazy on me. This is the first of a series and so it is not ironed out properly. I try not to sound like Wikipedia, but it is sort of hard to avoid something like that in such a short video. Although I of course never use wiki in my research. If you want more professional things, check out my two recent videos on East Germany. Those take a lot more professional research, and I take the time to really study every word I say. I really mean that. But anyways, I will see you soon. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something new.